Boa noite, Portuguese. Tomorrow, Portugal will play Ghana at 4 p.m. in Qatar for the first group stage game where I am absolutely nervous for. I'm not looking forward to it. I, I, listen, I just watched the Belgium Canada game. When I see teams like Canada, Japan putting up performances like this, I get nervous because I know how complacent Portugal can be. I know how uh, weak and negative Fernando Santos can be for Portugal. Listen, I'm expecting a good performance from Portugal tomorrow night, okay? I, I'm, I'm expecting these players to turn up. I want to see some good football. And we have the players to beat Ghana. We do. From what I've seen from Ghana, they play 4 2 3 1. They're not necessarily a team who likes to keep a lot of possession of the ball. They're happy sitting back and then hitting you on the counter. Um, one thing I will say is that Anarchy Williams, AU, Lamptey, these are good players. They can affect the game positively for Ghana. And look, if we're not playing to the best of our ability, and what I've seen from this World Cup, I've, I've been discussing it with a lot of people. The teams who have been pressing throughout most of the game, the high-pressing teams have managed to get results. Canada, for me today, unfortunate for them. They did not have the final ball at times and the finishing was poor. That's why they didn't win the game. If they had someone like Haaland up front, they probably would have won that game 4-1. I mean, obviously, look, if buts and maybes, if, if they had been 3-1 up, of course, Belgium would have gone more attacking. But both teams playing a back five. But listen, today, Canada, they were they were all over the place. The, the, the right back at times in midfield attacking positions. It, it was crazy. It was crazy. And Canada, again, a team who haven't been in the World Cup since 1986. They played for their lives out there. They deserved a win today against Belgium. Yes, Belgium, the more clinical side, the better quality in possession. But I thought that Canada... Some of the passes, the little triangles, the managing to get away from danger, uh, the defensive recoveries. It, it, it was amazing from what, what I saw from Canada today. And tomorrow when I look at Portugal against Ghana, I'm nervous. It's the first group stage game for Portugal. And I've seen lots of games. I've seen teams like Japan come back and they were losing at halftime. Same with Saudi Arabia. Some big surprises in, the, in this World Cup tournament. Some big surprises. And I hope that Portugal tomorrow... Just put on a clinical performance. And listen, there's a big conversation. If Ronaldo starts, you can't press how you want to. Yes, I, 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 from what I've seen, teams in this competition who press are winning games. Yes, maybe not Canada, which, which they pressed to the 90th minute. But teams who are pressing high, energetic, counter-pressing when losing possession of the ball are winning games. And teams like this who can carry those performances and that consistency throughout the whole tournament win, win this tournament. Tomorrow, what do I expect? I think that Portugal tomorrow will play a 4-3-3. What do I expect from Fernand Sanchez? I think he will play Diogo Costa in goal. There's no debate, in my opinion, the best Portuguese goalkeeper in the world at the moment. The distribution, the shot-stopping ability, the sweeper-keeper, that's what he's about. Right-back has to be Cancelo. Centre-back. There's a discussion there because I think that Ruben Diaz, there's no question. Pepe is not fit. I would love to see Antonio Silva, but he's young. Is the first group stage game. You need a win. He's probably going to go with Danilo. I don't mind that. I like Danilo. Uh, and left back, you've got to go with Nunez. Three in midfield, who's he going to go with? If he goes with a 4-3-3, I expect him to go. One defensive midfielder out of William and John Pelinha. I think he might go William. Because he's trusted him more. He's, you know, William has been his one of his favourite players. He's got favourites for Nan Sanchi, he really does. And I think he'll go William. I would love to see Bernardo Silva in midfield. And I, I think he'll play Bruno Fernandes. I think he might go Bernardo in, 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 in midfield. Because what we saw in the playoffs was that when you have a, a four in midfield in particular, you have a more active, off the ball um, impact in the game. And that's what we need. We need players who are active off the ball, tackles, interceptions, and that's what's going to win us the game because we've we've seen at times when we've seen Portugal in, in games where we're playing perhaps William and Danilo in midfield, two defensive midfielders who, yes, they're going to be defensively stable, but where's the creativity? Where is the off-the-ball, um, you know, the off-the-ball work, which William and Danilo do offer, but you you need that balance. And perhaps if you're playing Uruguay, for example, Portugal are going to have to play João Pelinha, maybe Ruben Neves and Bruno Fernandes, or maybe Bernardo Silva, João Pelinha and Bruno Fernandes, who just as good as they are in possession as they are out of possession, which is what we need to see from Portugal. And I think the front three, Ronaldo, João Félix and Rafael Leão, I think that's what he'll do. It wouldn't surprise me to see Ruben Neves start, and it wouldn't surprise me to perhaps 
Perhaps see Djokdalo start. I know this sounds like a crazy one, but I think Djokdalo has been amazing for Manchester United. And if Fernando Sanchez is feeling a bit too confident in this game, he might risk playing Cancelo at left back because he's such a fantastic player at left back. I think it's too early to do that. It wouldn't surprise me to see it. There are loads of options there at fullback for us to experiment with, but not now. I think we need to beat Ghana. We need to beat Uruguay. And in Korea, yes, maybe you can change the team up a bit. But either way, our subs are very strong. So we're still going to have a strong team. Personally, for me, I would go Cancelo. I would go Pepe. I would go Ruben Diaz, Nunminj. Midfield, I'll probably play Juan Pelinha. I do think against Ghana, we can still beat them with a very attacking midfield three, but who are equally as important off the ball. Bruno Fernandes, Bernard Silva, possibly. Ruben Neves, maybe even Vitinha. Front three, I like that front three of Juan Felix, Ronaldo and Rafael Leon. However, if he goes with a four in midfield, again... The midfield space is going to be very hard for Ghana to, to get through our midfield, especially when you've got players like uh, Bernardo Silva. Um, he's got, look, if you've got four midfield, you're very very evidently going to play a defensive midfielder there as well um, to protect the back four and allow the, the, the rest of the three midfield to get into attacking positions, um, you know, switching from a 4-1-3-2 or whatever. So it wouldn't surprise me to see him play with four midfield and two strikers, Andre Silva and Ronaldo, maybe João Felix, maybe occupy more of that... Um, behind a striker role for Jean Felix, support Ronaldo and allow him to, you know, link up with Jean Felix. We could see that as well. Tomorrow, I'm going to go with a 2-0 win. I think it's going to be a difficult game for us. Um, but we need to win. We need to win this first game and, and go into Uruguay with confidence because Uruguay have a good team. I'm excited to see what they do against South Korea as well. We've seen a lot of surprises this tournament. What do you guys think is going to happen?